10 for Taiwan Top 10. As our faithful listeners will know, there's an election coming up in Taiwan in just about another week or so, isn't it? A little bit over a week. A little over a week, yeah. And uh, that means we're in election season. It's election fever time here in Taiwan once again. This month, we're taking a look at 10 unique things you can see during a Taiwanese election campaign. Number seven. All right, last week we finished off with, uh, you know, politicians, candidates, Standing on street corners and waving in the morning, going to night markets, making public appearances. Yeah, you know. giving handshakes to everyone. A lot of people, all the, and that's the whole way down the ballot too. From like in this case, mayoral candidates, uh, and you know, all the way down to neighborhood heads. Mm. Towards the bottom of the ballot, sort of like in the neighborhood head sort of area there, or maybe maybe city councilors might do this too. Some people will actually come like knock on your doors. Yeah. and ask you what you need, what you think, what you want. And you know, I think you have a story to share. Yes, this, I do. Actually. I do. Um, I used to live in a very old house, actually. It's a one-floor house. Actually, that's where my, my in-laws are living still. And uh, when it was, like, near election time, our neighborhood chief, and he's been the neighborhood chief for quite some years, I would say a few decades. They don't have term limits, do they? Don't <laughs> no, think, no, they don't. They don't. Yeah. In a lot of places anyway. Yeah. And so he came knocking and he says, hi, you know, is there anything you need? And we were having, I don't want to say mice, we were really having rats in our place around that time. And I told him about it. And he says, well, I'll come by and bring you some rat poison. And he showed you. We make a political ad out of that. Yeah. We went to Shirley's house when none other were. <laughs> And and I think I think there was another time when um, they we, we said we would like a one of those um, sensor lights, you like know, motion detectors. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because right outside our door, because it's kind of a a, a street with not that many street lights. Uh, okay. So he actually installed one. Wow. But um, but the funny thing is, a month after it broke. <laughs> the never heard, went out. They were, he was never heard from again. They <laughs> never came back to. You're right. No yeah. follow up. No. Uh, I didn't even bother the, to tell him until the next election. Right. <laughs> So there you go. That, that's material for an ad campaign. I think the key to the story, though, is uh, first a one story or first floor. If you're living in an apartment complex or like you know a high oh, rise or like a yeah, you're not going to hear. Yeah, no, no. It's I, mostly. I think it's more of a rural area thing too. So it's special to see that that happens in Taipei too. Just if you're living on the ground floor, though, mostly. Right. Number six. Well, campaigns in Taiwan sort of have a uniform of sorts. What do candidates tend to wear? Not always, but often. Yeah, and most of these vests that they wear. Yeah, there's a campaign are, vest, and it's a very specific style of vest. It's very flashy yellow. Uh, well, most it depends of the time. on. Well, most no, no, no. Time. These no. days, um, it, they, they, have, colors they have distinctive colors, yes. <laughs> so I've seen pink. Oh, I've yeah, seen okay. Blue. The, they tend to be sort of colors that stand out visually, though, bright yeah. colors. Yeah. And they're usually emblazoned with a candidate's name, name. Uh, party affiliation, yeah. Yeah. sometimes party insignia as well, yeah. and what they're running for. In, and uh, not just them, but uh, their campaign people, the people handing out tissue packets and ads and flyers and so forth, uh, canvassing for them, will also wear the same vest. That is right. Um, what do you think about those vests? Um, well, I don't know. Um, as an eye, I think it's kind of ugly. <laughs> I don't think they'll be seen on a catwalk in there uh, <laughs> soon. But it is, it, it's, a, it's an interesting uniform, and I think a lot... They sure make you stand out. Yeah, that's true. You can look at immediately at a person and say, they're oh. running for office or they're <laughs> campaigning for somebody. Right. So, and so depending on how you, what your mood is, you can avoid them to also <laughs> <laughs> no signatures for you. No. Oh, God. So, oh, well. Anything to let everybody know who he is. Right. Uh, you know, yeah. Remember my name. My name's right here. And, and then the nothing. campaign photos and posters, they appear in the same vest. Yes. So. All right. So, vest. Vest. Uniform vest. Number five. Okay. This is also a time of year, or I guess every election cycle is a time, when a certain symbol starts to appear a lot. And I know... It's not. I don't think it's just for candidates either. It, it also appears around ads for ballot initiatives and yeah. referendums, and it's sort of like a peace sign, except one of the sort of diagonal bits is missing. Uh huh. Yeah. Well, what does this sign mean, Shirley? What does it all mean? It's everywhere. 
Well, it actually kind of stands for the Chinese character for person. Zhen. Zhen. It's a stylized. Yeah. In a circle. Yes, yes, it's in a circle. And what does it mean, though? What does it represent? Well, it means voting. Right, it means voting or I voted or just, you know, I, vote I, for me. Yeah, I agree. Or, about, yeah. Uh, it's just it's, a, it's like our election sign. I and mean, a lot of places have sort of a check mark, like a check mark in a, in a little box. Mm -hmm. uh, we, we're much more creative than that, I guess. <laughs> I don't yes, know why. Have a stand. That, 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 in Taiwan, that means voting instead. And, uh, so I voted, and um, you know what happens is that actually these stamps are longish cylindrical stamps. They're like with the kind a of seals. Yeah, yeah. In 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 place of a signature in some cases in Taiwan, like a chalk. Right, right. right. But you know it's a long one. It's almost as long like a pencil. Stamp. Yeah. It's sort of big, and, you know. <laughs> right. And they have uh, you know one of the red um, ink pads, mm -hmm. and so you kind of stamp on it, and then you make sure that you um, stamp that. So that's the sign you actually use to mark your ballot, right? Yes. And you have to use that. You don't use pen. You don't write in. You, you cut the rice, it becomes... Uh, there's no filling in of bob no. bubbles with pen. You take your stamp and you, you stamp it. Stamp it. Firmly. You've got to stamp it the right place. Right. You've got to stamp it the wrong place. It becomes so wasted, uh, a wasted spoiled ballot. ballot. Yes. Yeah. So I, that actually, I think, gives voting a much more satisfying feel. It's like, and that's the way yeah. I voted. Bam. Well, you know, the first a satisfying time... Satisfying thud. Yeah, the first time I voted, when I just came back from Taiwan, I stamped it the wrong place. Ooh. Yeah, later I realized. So I was like, oops, I'm new <laughs> at this. I'm definitely new at this, you know, so. But, um, it's got to be hard for people, you know, Taiwanese who are like multiple, they have multiple nationalities, and they come back to vote, and maybe they're used to it, like an electronic system. But I know, none uh, of that here, still. Damn, give your verdict. <laughs> Think about all that ballot counting afterwards. And all those uh, all those voting signs, because that's what the stamp has, it's yeah. carved with that symbol. Right, so. right. Now, isn't that something interesting about the way we do elections here in Taiwan? Mm. Well, join us next week, because there's more. But in the meantime, we'd love to hear from you. Please write us letters, what you think about our new website, what you think about our program, what you think about Taiwan or us. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> um, write us. Our address is what, noted down, PO Box 123-199 Taipei, Taiwan. Our email address is rti at rti.org.tw. And once again, you can always reach us on Facebook. We look forward to leaving your comments there. Until next week, I'm Shirley Lin. I'm John Van Trias. Bye. Bye. Oh, really? So it regulates the metabolism of carbohydrates and fats. So DOK.